take a look at a sapling question. Um, here we have a dying, and the question is, um, draw the intermediate and product structures, including any formal charges, and they want the most stable resonance form. So we've got to choose between these pi bonds. So let's number them. One, two, three, four. Which pi bond, when it reacts, is going to give us the most stable carbocation? Carb the pi bond between one and two, or the pi bond between three and four? Between one and two. And where, where do we want to put the... Where is the new CH bond going to be formed at? Which carbon? Carbon one. So the plus charge will be on carbon two. Very good. All right, pi bond is a nucleophile. The HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital of the pi bond is actually the nucleophile. It's going to attack the sigma star of the hydrogen chlorine bond, breaking the sigma bond. So what's that first carbocation going to look like? And the plus charge there. Renumber our carbons. One, two, three, four. Plus, we have what else left over to balance our charge? Cl minus. So at this point, right? This is a this is a what kind of what kind of carbocation do we have here? Tertiary and allylic. Good. So tertiary allylic is really stable. So one of the products could be the chlorine just reacting with a carbocation. That would give that. And the chlorine can come from the top or the bottom, so we'd have this. We have both enantiomers. Right? We'd have both enantiomers. But the other question says, the part of this question says, they asked for the less stable resonance form. So let's maybe redraw the original tertiary allylic carbocation. Can we draw a resonance form for this? We can. Yep. So anytime you have a carbocation, you can do rearrangements and resonance for sure. So resonance arrow. And now the plus charge, the or new pi bond between which two carbons? Two and three. Plus charge there. Chlorine still, right? Cl still along for the ride. One, two, three, four. Chlorine reacts. Again, both enantiomers are formed. One, two, three, four. What kind of product did we just form? That's the one, four product. What was the first product we formed? The one, two. Is, uh, is there a difference between the, the kinetics and thermodynamics? So the one, two, so there's two different intermediates. So we have, let's label these. This is gonna be intermediate A. This can be intermediate B. If I were to draw a free energy diagram here, energy, same starting materials. Which intermediate is more stable, A or B? A, so that would be lower. So we'll put intermediate A here, and that means intermediate B is higher in energy. We said that because this is secondary in allylic, right? Versus tertiary in allylic. What about the products? Is one product more stable than the other? Which product is more stable? The one four looks like it's more stable. Why did you say the one four? More substituted alkene, right? The Zaitsev's rule. So we'll put the one four here, and then the one two would have to be a little bit higher. It's all relative. So the one four comes from which intermediate? The B, right? So higher energy, or er, well, get there. Higher energy intermediate. So it's take more energy to get there. Both lead to the more unstable intermediate. And the but then to get to the more stable product. The kinetic one is the one two, gets to the lower energy intermediate, and then to the higher, but then to the higher energy product. Right? So 
So we think about these reactions, we want to think about conditions, right? If we want to, if we ran the reaction cold, what product would we most likely make? If we ran the reaction cold, we'd make the one, two, the kinetic product, right? This is going to be the kinetic product, the one, two, because it comes from the, the lower energy transition state and also the lower energy intermediate. If we heat it, heat it up a bunch, what, react, what product should we make? Probably the one, four, right? But the, one four, the reason that takes more energy is because the 1,4 comes from the less stable intermediate, right? So, and the less likely intermediate. So, there you go. So, a good, a good question is, will, will initially this 3,4 bond ever break? It will not, right? I should actually draw another step in here, right? Everything goes through intermediate A, and then it goes up to, you have to go up to intermediate B. So this 3,4 bond is never really going to break because you're always going to try to form the most stable carbocation first, right? So you're never really going to break this 3-4 bond. That's right. I'm actually going to fix my free energy diagram. So I don't like this free energy diagram. It had some good ideas, but there's, some, there's a problem with that because, right, you need to make intermediate A first before you even make intermediate B. So let's, let's reimagine our, our free energy diagram. Let's fix this. Because you can't make intermediate B without first making intermediate A. So let's take a look at maybe how we do this a little differently. So let's draw them in there again. So intermediate A is lower in energy. So here's <coughs> intermediate A. And we're going to need some energy to get to intermediate A. Sometimes from intermediate A, you're immediately going to just go right to the 1, 2 product, right? You go right to the 1, 2 product. And that means the chlorine is just going to react, and you're going to be done. Make that 1, 2 product. Other times from intermediate A, if there's enough energy, what you're going to do is actually get up here to intermediate B. So there's enough energy. Sometimes you can go up to here. Not very likely, but then once you get to intermediate B, the only product you can make then is back down to the 1,4. So some people might say, well, how the heck are you ever going to make the 1,4? Let's say you make the one two, and this hill back up isn't that high, right? Just even going because right, the energy, the reaction just go forward and backwards. The hill back up here isn't that high, and sometimes I, I don't know, just luck. You get up there and you make intermediate B, and then it boom, it collapses down to one four. And if you ever make this one four, look how high up the hill you have to go to get back out. So it's not so much that is that is how likely is the one four reaction to take to form. It's a matter of time and energy. So, if, right, you run this reaction, you're going to probably the first 10 minutes, let's say, you make all 1, 2. But if you let it keep going and you reheat, really heat it up, really the 1, 2 product can start going back to intermediate A. And then if there's enough energy around, something happens, we can get up to intermediate B, and then that can collapse down to 1, 4. And then no matter what we do, once you're down at the 1, 4, you're never climbing back up that hill. Right? Does that make sense? This is a better picture of what's going on there. Right? Always be thinking about these things in these free energy diagram terms.